RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents Transcribe, the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show. For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevalier, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. Like most people, Phil and Alice have been eagerly looking forward to their summer vacation. They're anxious to make a fast getaway, but I've got a feeling that something may slow them down. More about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. You may think you keep a close check on your money, but do you know how much you have in your pocket right now? Don't look, take a guess. Now go ahead and check. How far off were you, 25 or 30 cents? Well, for as little as that every day, you can buy the finest television there is, RCA Victor. You'd never miss the money. New RCA Victor television is priced as low as $199.95. And every RCA Victor has the automatic magic monitor, an exclusive circuit system that automatically brings in and holds the finest pictures possible. The magic monitor automatically screens out interference, automatically steps up power, and automatically ties the clearest picture to the best sound. Ask your dealer about his particular easy payment plan, how, after a small down payment, it may take only pennies a day to own America's most advanced TV, RCA Victor Television with the Magic Monitor. Here's another good reason for owning an RCA Victor, America's only coast-to-coast factory organization for expert installation and maintenance is available exclusively to owners of RCA Victor Television. The RCA factory service contract is one more reason why every year more people buy RCA Victor than any other television. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Bill Harris. Today, the Harrises start on their summer vacation. They've rented a cabin up in the high Sierras and are going to spend two months there. As we look in, they're all packed and are about ready to leave. Hey, man, I can't wait to get up to them mountains. That rugged life, that's for me. We'll be all alone with nobody near us for miles. We'll have the whole place to ourselves with nothing to do but hunt and fish. Oh, it sounds exciting to me. I love the idea of that primitive life. Let's see, if I packed everything... I've got my sable wrap, my ermine jacket, and my silver fox stole. Hold it, Jaza. <laughs> Alice, you don't need all that fancy stuff. Well, what are you taking along? Only the necessities. I'm taking a pair of blue jeans, a pair of boots, an old hat, a pair of socks, and four cases of old smuggler. <laughs> <laughs> That's just for medicinal purposes. <laughs> In case I get bitten by a snake. Oh, Phil, there aren't any snakes up that high. I know, that's why I packed one in my suitcase. <laughs> Small water moccasin, you know, a kid. He won't take up much room. He's kind of cute. Of course, I had his teeth pulled, too. <laughs> are the kids' things all packed? Yes, everybody's things are ready, but, uh, well, all except Williams. Honey, why do you have to take that brother? Oh, well, he'll be a lot of fun. He'll be a great companion for you. He's an outdoor man, and he just loves the rugged country. Oh, he's as rugged as a brownie. Well, sis, that boy... I'm ready to go. Mm-hmm. Here, Philip, here are the things I want you to pack for me. What do you got there? All the things I'll need. My woodcraft manual, a six-bladed Boy Scout knife, <laughs> pottery baking set, Foot warmer, back scratcher, and bow and arrow. You ain't gonna change your underwear, huh? I packed my clothes separately. This is just my camping and hunting equipment. Fine hunting equipment, a bow and arrow. Well, what's wrong with that? A lot of men hunt with arrows. With suction cups on them? <laughs> I just use the suction cups to catch the little animals. How you catch the big one? With a plunger? (laughs) Will he 
you sure you know how to hunt? Oh, I'll prove it to you. We'll go hunting every day. And I guarantee we'll come back every night with a bag full of butterflies. <laughs> Ooh, how exciting. <laughs> Daddy, Phyllis and I are all packed. Can't we leave soon? Yes, in fact, we'd better. We got a long drive ahead of us. Oh, I can't wait to get up to the mountains, Daddy. We'll have a lot of fun. Just you and Mommy and Alice and me and Uncle Willie and Julius. Julius? Who invited the Barracuda? <laughs> I did, Phil. I felt sorry for the boy. He never gets to go away for the summer, and I thought it would do him good. How come you're taking Julius when you wouldn't let me take Elliot? Because Julius needs the fresh air and the sunshine. He's anemic. So is Elliot. <laughs> that poor kid's blood count has gone down from 90 proof to 70. <laughs> I got news for you. He was awfully hurt, too, when I told him he couldn't go. Well, let him be hurt. Every time we go someplace on our vacation, he horns in. Ever since we've been married, he goes along with us whenever we go on a trip. And he acts awful. That's not so. He behaved very nicely on our honeymoon. <laughs> I was surprised he agreed to let me go along. Well, he didn't want to at first, but I promised him that you wouldn't get in the way. <laughs> There's one trip he's not going on, and I made sure of it. I told him we were leaving tomorrow. That's why we're sneaking off today. If I know him, he'll be around here tomorrow morning with his bags, invited or not. Oh, Alice, how can you be so cruel to Elliot? I told him he couldn't go on the trip. He, he said he didn't mind, except it would mean going through a whole summer with, out hearing you sing. And he, he said he'd miss your glorious voice. Well, I wouldn't want him to miss it. Then he can go with us? No, I'll make a record and mail it to him. <laughs> Turn the machine on. For a minute, I thought it was going to work. <laughs> we ain't got a barrel of money. Maybe we're ragged and funny. But we'll travel along singing a song side by side. Don't know what's coming tomorrow. Maybe it's trouble and sorrow. But we'll travel the road. Sharing our load side by side Through all kinds of weather What if the sky should fall Just as long as we're together It doesn't matter at all When they've all had their quarrels and parted We'll be the same as we started Just traveling along Singing a song Side by side. Side by side, side by side. We'll keep on walking together. Life will be a ball. Let everyone, everyone join together. One for all. Oh, we ain't got a barrel of money. Maybe we're ragged and funny. But we'll travel along singing a song. Side by side. Oh, we don't know what's coming tomorrow. Trouble and sorrow, but we'll travel the road, sharing our load, side by side. Through all kinds of weather, what if the sky should fall, just as long as we're together, it doesn't matter at all, when they've all had their quarrels and parted, we'll be the same as we started, just traveling along, singing a song, side. That'll hold Elliot for the summer. Look, it's getting late, honey. We'd better leave. Everybody grab something. Carry it out the car. Hey, whiz, this is a dirty trick to play on Elliot. Sneaking off like this a day earlier. Well, if we didn't, he'd be here tomorrow morning with his bags. Not my Elliot. He doesn't go where he's not wanted. All right, everybody, get in the car. Come on, now. We got a long trip ahead of us, and we... we... Seems to be something wrong. This seat's awful high. Curly, I'll thank you to get off my lap. <laughs> Elliot, when did you get in the car? Last Tuesday. <laughs> I've been sitting here for five days. 
Look, Elliot. I'm starting to get saddle sores. <laughs> Elliot. Elliot, you can't go on this trip with us. Why not? Because you weren't invited. Well, what's that got to do with it? If I waited till I was invited, I'd never go anyplace. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. You weren't invited on this trip. We don't want you on this trip. So beat it. Get lost. Go away and stop bothering us. Curly, what's she hinting at? <laughs> Look, Alice, stop beating around the bush. You got something to say? Say it. <laughs> If you have nothing to say, get back in the bush. I don't like what you're not saying. <laughs> Elliot, I know it's kind of tough to get this through to you, kid, but, but Alice doesn't want you to go on this trip. Why not? Well, for one thing, there's not enough room in the car. We've already got six people going. Me, Alice, the children, Willie, and Julius. Julius? What mentally incompetent moron invited him? I did. <laughs> I mean, it's none of your business who invited him. The fact remains he's going, Elliot. Alice Faye Harris. How can you sit there in your mink blue jeans and say that? I said it and I mean it. Now get out of this car before I kick you with my chinchilla hunting boots. All right, I'll get out. I know when I'm not wanted. So long, Elliot. I'm sorry you can't go. You ain't mad at me, are you? No, I'm not one to bear a grudge. Go ahead, have a good time. Careful backing out of the garage. I'll direct you. How far back can I go? I'll tell you. Just keep coming back. A little further. A little further. A little further. That's enough. <laughs> well, now that you smashed your car, I guess you can't go. Oh, yes, we can. We just dented the fenders. Oh, come on, Phil. Let's get started. We have to pick up Julius, and I want to stop at Mother's house first to say goodbye. Okay. So long, Elliot. Curly, I'm not going to let you go without me. You're not going to drive off and leave let me. Let go of my linen duster. <laughs> now, so long, kid. Have a nice summer. <laughs> Will you stay in the car with the children? Phil and I'll just take a minute with Mother. Come on, Phil. Well, let's hurry it up, honey. Let's just say goodbye and then come right out. And don't ask her to come along. We ain't got enough room. Ellie! <laughs> How did you get here so fast? You know that front tire that you were complaining was so wobbly all the way over? What about it? That was me. <laughs> Stop it. Now, how'd you get over here? I hung on to your bumper. You ain't gonna shake me. <laughs> Look, Alice, you might as well take him. It's gonna be easier on my nerves. Oh, no, no. There's not room enough for him. Now, you get rid of him while I go and see Mother. Hey, Curly, there's room in the car for me now. While Alice is inside seeing her mother, let's leave without her. <laughs> Look, Elliot, you might as well give up. There isn't enough room in the car for you. There would be if you'd leave somebody behind. But who? I can't leave Alice behind. I can't leave my kids behind. And I can't leave Willie be Who says I can? <laughs> Look, there ain't no way we can talk Willie out of a free trip. I believe I've got a way. Willie wears glasses, don't he? Yeah. And he can't see a thing without him, can he? No, but he... Oh, I get it. <laughs> if something were to happen to his glasses, he'd have to stay in town to have a new pair made. Correct. <laughs> uh, Willie, uh, would you step out of the car for a minute, please? Uh, certainly. Be right there. Uh, what, uh, what do you want, Elliot? Willie! Did you know that your glasses are broken? Uh, wh 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 where? Well, hand them to me and I'll show you. You see, there's a great big crack right over... Whoops! I dropped them. <laughs> what was he wearing? Headlights? <laughs> the loudest bifocals I ever heard. <laughs> oh, gee, Willie, I'm terribly sorry. I dropped your glasses on the sidewalk and broke them. Oh, that's all right, Philip. I have another pair. Look, uh, Curly, we're wasting time. Let's just set wait fire minute, to him. <laughs> Willie, uh, where do you keep your other pair of glasses? In my apartment. Uh, Philip, you can drive me over there while we're waiting for Alice. Oh, you'd better lead me to the car. I can't see a thing. You can't, huh? Curly, lend me a lead him. <laughs> now then, Willie, I'll just take you by the arm, turn you around, 
And away we go. Elliot. Sure? Where are you leading them? The car ain't in that direction. No, but that open manhole is. <laughs> oh, so it is. Uh, come along, Willie. We'll each take one of your arms and lead you. Now, you're sure that you can't see where you're going, huh, Willie? Oh, no, no, no. I can't see a step in front of me. If you fellas weren't leading me, I'd be liable to step into... Well, what do you know? He fell down that manhole. <laughs> yes, he did, didn't he? Get me out of this sewer! <laughs> hey, Curly, how'd you get down there? I was so busy talking to Willie, I didn't watch where I was going. <laughs> That's a silly thing to do. Well, never mind. Help me get out of here. Why should I? I don't care who's in the manhole as long as it leaves a place for me in the car. <laughs> I'll drive him up, Curly. You join us whenever you get a chance. All right, Phil. I'm ready to leave. And, <clears throat> fellas, what are you doing out in the middle of the street? And where's Phil? Uh, uh, Curly decided not to go to the mountains, Alice. Uh, he's going to spend the summer at Pismo Beach. <laughs> <laughs> he's swimming there now. I am not. Let me out of this manhole. Oh, Phil, will you stop playing and come out of there? Elliot, Elliot, help him out. Oh, all you? right. Grab my hand, Curly. <clears throat> hey, where you been, Curly? You're sopping wet. Why, you no good. <laughs> Alice, we can't take him on a trip in that condition. Curly, you go home, dry out, and meet us later. Come along, Alice. Get away from my car. You ain't going no place. <laughs> the nerve of that guy trying to take my place on the trip. One of these days, I'm going to take... No, 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 Phil, don't get excited. Get in the car, and on the way over to Julius's, we'll turn on the radio... Maybe Peter Potter will be playing one of your records. I don't care what be... Yeah, that would soothe my ruffled nerves. Young Johnny Jones, he had a cute little boat. And all the girlies he would take for a float. He had girlies by the score. Sweet little peaches on the shore. But Johnny was a Weisenheimer, you know. His steady girl was Flo. And every Sunday afternoon, they'd jump in his boat and then they'd spoke. And then he'd row, row, row. Right up that river, he would row, row, row. That hug he'd give her, then he'd kiss her now and then. She would tell him when, and then he'd fool around and fool around, and then he'd kiss again. <laughs> row, row. A little further he would row, just he and blow. And with her head on his chest, he'd take a few measures rest, and off he'd row, row, row. In Johnny's boat, he had a cute little seat. And all the kisses that he stole were so sweet. And he knew just how to row. He was that rowing Romeo. He had an island where the trees were so grand. He knew just how to land. Then tales of love he'd tell the flow till it was time for them to go. And then he'd row, row, row. On up that river he would row so slow. That hug he'd give her, then he'd kiss her now and then. She would tell him when, and then he'd fool around and fool around, and then he'd kiss her. <laughs> row, row. A little further he would row, just he and flow. And then he'd drop both his oars, take a few more encores, and off he'd row. Row, row, just here in Florence. Row, row, row right into heaven. Row, row. He had no Johnson Motors, so Johnny and Flo would row, row, row. Peter played a peachy one that time. <laughs> oh, Philip, can't you drive a little faster? We'll never get started on our trip at now, this rate. Now, take it easy, Willie. Just take it easy. Take it easy. I bet Julius was wondering what happened to us. We were supposed to pick him up hours ago. I hope he's ready. Oh, he's ready, Phil. There he is, standing at the curb with his bag. Oh, yeah. Hiya, Julius. I'm sorry I'm late, kid. Don't talk to me, you big ham hock. <laughs> You been stood in here that long? Yeah, I stood here for three hours till I got bunions on me feet. Then I sat down for three hours until I... Where you been, anyway? <laughs> Don't 
Don't exaggerate. <laughs> you haven't been waiting that long. Now, come on, get... Wait a minute. What kind of hat are you wearing? That ain't no hat. I've been here so long, the pigeons built a nest in me head. <laughs> Now, look, take your two bags and put them back in the car there in the trunk. Okay. Just take me bags and put them in... Beat it, you little fink. This berth's occupied. Oh, no! Now he's living in a trunk compartment. <laughs> Are you spending the summer here, Mr. Lewis? Not so loud. Nobody knows I'm here, so don't tell Mr. Harris. I gotta tell him. Why? If I don't, he'll get arrested for smuggling dope across the border. <laughs> Why don't you be quiet? Julia, it's what's taking you so long back there. Mr. Harris, your trunk's a little crowded. You know what you got back here? Yeah, I got a spare tire, a tool kit, and a jack. I got news for you. There's a joke on your jack. <laughs> oh, no, not Elliot again. You guessed it. Elliot, get out of that trunk. All right. Now, get in the car, Julius. Let's get started. Say, wait a minute, Julius. Where are the provisions I ordered? I left them in the refrigerator at the market so they keep fresh. Oh, nuts. Now we're going to have to stop at the market and pick them up. Well, come on. Let's be on our way. Goodbye, Elliot. But Curly... Fine trip. Left six hours ago and we're not even out of town yet. All we do is keep making stops. Nobody seems to know oh, what honey, the... honey, honey, you just passed the market. Stop the car. <laughs> What fell on the hood? Me. Oh. <laughs> Stopped the car so fast I slid off the roof. <laughs> you don't give up too easy, do you? <laughs> Look, now get off of that hood and get lost. Julius, go on the market and get those provisions out of the refrigerator. Well, I can't carry them by myself. There's three big packages. I'll need help. All right, I'll help you. Hey, wait for me, Curly. Just to show you there's no hard feelings, I'll go in and help you. That's mighty nice of you. And what do you got in mind, Clyde? <laughs> Nothing yet, but I'll think of something. <laughs> Here's the refrigerator, fellas. Come on in with me and help me carry this stuff out. Ooh, man, it's freezing in this room. This place feels like a rehearsal hall for Sonia Henning. <laughs> the packages are over here in the corner. We'll each take one. Hey, Curly, I got it. If Julius were to get locked in this refrigerator, he couldn't go. And then there'd be room in the car for me, wouldn't there? Yeah. <laughs> you think good, Nicole, room. <laughs> How do we do it? As soon as I say go... We'll make a run for the door and shut it on the kid. Gotcha. Here's a package for you, Mr. Harris. Thanks, kid. And here's a package for you, Mr. Lewis. Thanks, kid. Go, Curly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked. We locked them in. We certainly did. <laughs> get left in there. The old man's a little slow on his feet. <laughs> I guess this just isn't Curly's day. Oh, what's taking you fellas so long? It's getting dark Al, out. Get me out of this icebox. Now he's in the icebox. <laughs> Bill, why don't you stop horsing around? Julius. Julius, open that door. Okay. Come on out, Mr. Harris. B-R-R, it's cold. <laughs> Now, will you come on? Let's get to the car and get going. Yeah, we got a long trip ahead of us. Elliot. Ma'am? The last time you're not going with us. Very well. I know when to give up. If you don't want me, I'll leave. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, at last, we're rid of him. Now, let's pick up these packages, put them in the car, and get on our way, huh? <laughs> Oh, 
it just thinks, Phil. Only 50 miles more and we'll be at the cabin. Yeah. Hey, I better stop at this service station and get some gas. Okay. Man, I can't wait to get up to them mountains. I hear they got some great hunting and fishing up there. Shall I uh, fill her up, sir? Yeah, she'll take about 15 gallons. Yes, sir. How you doing, bud? You got it filled up yet? No, every time I put gas in the tank, somebody spits it back at me. <laughs> Alice Elliott's in the gas tank. How'd he do that? I don't know, but we've got all summer to figure it out. <laughs> Bill will be back in just a moment. Whether you're off on a vacation or just staying around home, you can listen to all your favorite records with RCA Victor's new three-speed portable phonograph. This remarkably compact automatic Victrola phonograph is styled along luggage lines, has a comfortable handle for easy carrying. Take it to the shore, to the mountains. Play it anywhere there's an AC outlet. It can play all your records automatically. The center's the secret. Load up to 1445 extended play records on the large slip-on spindle and relax to almost two hours of music. When you're in the mood for music on 78 or long play records, load the standard spindle. You'll enjoy concert hall tone at every speed because this portable three-speed Victrola phonograph has RCA Victor's famous golden throat tone system. It's just one of the many fine Victrola phonographs now at your RCA Victor dealer. Folks, this is Phil again. You know, this is our last show of the season, and Alice and I want to thank all of you for making it a wonderful season. In fact, we enjoyed being with you so much that we're all coming back next fall, starting October the 4th, same time. Alice and I would like to thank our entire cast, ladies and gentlemen, for without them, it wouldn't have been possible, and especially our two wonderful writers, Chevrolet and Singer. And I think you'll all want to join me in a word of gratitude to our sponsor, RCA Victor, because they have a wonderful summer show lined up for you, a show starring a great guy and a very good friend of mine, Tony Martin. Tony's starting next week, so be sure to listen to Tony Martin Time. He'll have some of the great RCA Victor recording artists as his guests, and I know he'll entertain you in the latest style. Thanks for a wonderful season, and good night. Good night, and have a wonderful summer, everybody. Thank you. Included in this program transcribed was Jerry Hausner. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Now, for less than $3, you can have long play records of your favorite classical music. RCA Victor's new Bluebird Records bring you the world's finest artists and such treasured selections as Tchaikovsky's Piano Concerto No. 1, Brahms Symphony No. 3, and ballet music from Sylvia. Listen to RCA Victor's Bluebird Classics. They're available on Long Play Records and in 45 albums for less than $3 each at your RCA Victor record dealers now. Next, hear best plays on NBC.